What's up, everybody? How are you guys? Welcome to the all new Custom A Go Go show brought to you by Gnarly Magazine. Have you guys checked out Gnarly Magazine yet? Well, I suggest that you do. We are going to, of course, link that below so you can find that link. Check out this new beanie. You guys like this thing? You want one? I'm just saying you might. It's pretty fucking cool. Go check it out. You can find uh, all of apparel, like this amazing t-shirt I've got on today, uh, and all kinds of other stuff, hats, uh, all things custom culture, and let's not forget magazines. We have subscriptions. You can buy just one at a time if you like, a couple. Uh, so check out gnarlymagazine.com. And let's not forget our wonderful sponsor today, Rod and Style. We're going to also link Rod and Style down below. You guys can check them out for uh, all features on drag races. They're following builds that are pretty amazing right now. So if that's the kind of stuff that you're into, then I highly suggest out check out Rod and Style. And please, please don't forget today, if you are watching and turning in, thank you so very much. Also hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like this video. The more we get seen, the more is we appreciate that. So today I have an amazing lady to talk to. I'm so excited. Kate Cook. Hi, Kate. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, uh, Kate Cook, if you guys don't know, has been featured already in Gnarly Magazine issue. I have it here, but I'll, I'll need to look. 17, I think. 17. That one. sounds yeah. about right. I was going to say yeah. 16 or 17. <laughs> so Kate Cook has an amazing story. And uh, I am so excited to talk to you today. Uh, I was talking to the guys. They're like, I was like, I want to talk to some, some really cool women and they were like, well, check out the magazine. I always get a copy of it. Started reading your story and I got so excited to talk to you because it's pretty incredible. So there's a lot to cover. We have a full hour to do it today. Um, I guess we'll just start out by, you know, introducing yourself, your shop, your name and anything you want to tell everyone today. For sure. So, um, yes, my name is Kate Cook and I am, uh, I just saw Hot Hi, Rod, Hot Rod Jen. Hey, Thanks girl. for popping in. Yes, talk about some really cool hot rod chicks. Definitely, she should be on y'all's interview list. <laughs> she will be the 15th, which is my birthday, and I am stoked. Awesome. Awesome. Am awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, so, yes, um, uh, I own a studio in Central Texas called Asphalt Canvas Custom Art, and I've been in business for about five years. Um, this year is my fifth year in business full time. Um, I've been a commission artist for probably over 10 years, um, but full time as an LLC for five years. And um, awesome. I work primarily in the automotive industry. I started out outside of that, but my passion for cars and uh, artwork kind of col collided after I graduated uh, college. So that's how I kind of became known in this industry as um, an artist. So that's incredible. And you kind of have a really cool backstory that I would love to talk about only because I think it makes you a really well-rounded artists because art sometimes doesn't just stop at custom culture there's so many oh, things yeah. to do that but uh what is it did you want to talk about that a little bit about what you used to do prior oh well i mean are you talking about like like da I, you you're I dancing. So dancing yeah you're dancing yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's kind of i actually it's so funny because i just started taking a dance class again and i'm in this adult ballet class and it's like it's I like, love it. It never goes away. No, I used doesn't. to be a dancer also in early oh, really? years. So I guess that's why I was excited to talk to you about this. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's so cool because like the more that I speak to women in this industry, the more common it is to see that they were in dance. Like I was really with Bogey from All Girls Garage and she and I shared the similar uh, background in ballet as well, which is crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like, did ballet never... to start as well. Yeah. You yeah, never, wow. you never so know. You never guess that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, from a very young age, um, I started ballet. Um, thanks to my parents, like, you know, kind of guiding me in my direction that I was hoping to go towards. And um, I got in with a company on scholarship and I danced with them for about, I'd say almost 13 years. Incredible. And then um, once I graduated high school, I started teaching ballet at a college locally and um, was part of their company, just kind of more, it was a lot more low key than um, strictly my the ballet career that I, the curriculum that I had learned. Um, and then I kind of had that come to Jesus moment with my dad where it was kind of like, do you want to go to school for ballet um, or do you want to, you know, go to school for art? And I guess the more I learn about this industry, the art industry, there's a lot of parents that actually see artwork 
as um, not like the greatest or most lucrative industry. And so now that I look back on my story, I'm like, wow, he, my parents were both like saying like, you should be an artist because it's lucrative. Like they had faith that this industry could provide me my family a good living. Um, and I, ha I had a lot of different um, opportunities in my high school career that, that proved that to me and to them. So um, I kind of decided like this was going to have a much better shelf life. Than and yeah, I was going to say, and, and <laughs> totally ballet does have a limited time due to your body and the physicality of it. So right, right. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, and it's so, the best shape I've ever been. But were in, you, but. I kind of, I kind of guess know the answer to this question, but you kind of <laughs> grew up in and around uh, custom culture. So oh, yeah, your, your yes. dad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My, um, so like after dance class, it was awesome. My, after dance class, my mom would take me and pick me up. And then after dance, I would be in the shop with my dad and my brother. And, um, we were just always, I always, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's my husband. I have to say, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but we, we were always in the shop. Um, and I, I never really had a product of, of my own until I was 16 and I got my first car, but I, we were always at car shows with my family. Um, and, and what was it? Just interesting. So, what was your first car? Yeah. So um, my first car was a 1966 Jeepster and I still have it to this day. And um, I, I definitely credit like the majority of my knowledge in this industry um, to, to buying that and building that car with my dad. Cause I, I knew nothing really. I, I liked cars, but I knew nothing about cars or the car scene the nitty gritty of it um, until I started to get to like tear that Jeep apart and um, totally like, touch the parts and, and see how everything goes together. And my interest really built from there. So I don't, I don't wrench on cars as much as I used to. Uh, we just built this badass shop in our backyard. So hopefully that will, um, that will start up again, especially now that we have a little boy, but, um, but yeah, the Jeepster was the first, my first love and, and my first car that got me started in this industry. <laughs> That's so cool. This is kind of a running theme through my interviews is how this is so much more than just something that you're into. Like it's, it's a culture, like, you know, it's, it's part of your family, your family history, you know, you being in the garage with your dad, me personally, it was in the garage with my grandfather and like getting my hands on tools and learning about the machinery and mechanics behind it. It does. It gives you a passion. That's definitely yeah. driven, I think later in life, but that's so awesome. And your Jeep actually has, a feature in yes, Haggerty. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was so cool. We had an awesome experience. Um, we had an awesome opportunity where some uh, Haggerty, they have like a smaller portion of their uh, company called Why I Drive, and it's a video um, series. It's like a vlog basically where um, a couple of guys come out and they film your whole story of like why you drive this certain car. And their, their, yeah. their whole point of like, making these docu these little docu series is to show like you know you could drive this nice like really comfortable vehicle <laughs> with air you, and yeah yes exactly or you could drive this really cool you know and for my for me it was my 1966 jeepster and um so i got to really share that story with cool. um my my audience that follows me which was super special to me because my asphalt canvas name um actually stems from like my jeepster like i like traveling in my Jeepster and meeting my clients or like traveling to different locations across America in my Jeepster is kind of what inspires me, like between the travel itself and then the people that we meet. Totally. It's like totally, it's totally the best of both worlds. I so. love that. And yeah, I definitely was inspired a little bit about that uh, reading about your story in the gnarly magazine issue to kind of get like a good grasp of who you were. And as a traveler myself, that's what I kind of do with my art. And it, it, it is, it's, it's so cool part of your story. So yes. I guess that kind of bleeds me in a little bit. Um, you had a really cool road trip to get to SEMA and, and that was SEMA 2018, correct? Yes. I would have yeah. to say that that was like one of the highlights of my career that kind of like, I was already pinstriping and, and dabbling and learning the, the, like the different types of automotive artwork, if you will, um, up until that point. But 2018 is actually when I started my business and, um, I had this wow. opportunity with SEMA. Um, it was actually with a company called Red Cap um, Workwear, and they were hey, known Jason. for hey, um, they were known for um, hiring artists. Well, not hiring, but they put out like a, a competition every year um, for artists to submit their artwork, and then whoever was chosen got to have their right. Because every year at work. SEMA, they have like a. a sponsored artists and they use your artwork. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, 
that was a super cool experience. They like gave us the money to fly there. And my husband and I had just bought his 1964 Dodge Polaris. And I mean, it was like bone stock and we had hardly done anything to it. And um, we were like, what if we use the money for flying? And we drove on Route 66. (laughs) Adventure. Like that, that is way better than jumping on a plane any day. How amazing is that? So your artwork uh, was chosen. Yes, yeah, it that was is so cool. Shocking. <laughs> Cause girl, wow, it was like, like very... what an incredible honor. Oh yeah, it was like a last minute thing too. Like I, I can't even begin. It's just it cracks me up every time I think about it. I like painted the the artwork on an old canvas I had from college, and I submitted it like the night of the competition due date. And then I didn't really tell like my husband or anybody about it. Cause I, I just was like, so doubtful. It was a like, nationwide I won't get competition. It. Like it's yeah. just whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And but then you still I was at, tried. Exactly. You I still did. went for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so oh, incredible. To my husband who was like, you're crazy. You need to try that. Like you need to enter and see what happens. Cause like, there's no, okay. like, it's silly. It was silly not to, you weren't going to like have any, you know, there was no reason not to enter it. And I had such a cool idea in my head. I was like, I just got to try. So I love when that. I, and when they, when they called me and told me that I like, I, my heart like stopped. I just could I not bet. That it's is perfect. so huge. That's yeah. so incredible. That's such an amazing story. And to you. your epic road trip on, on top of it, just to just yeah. get there, you know, it's like the yes. flavor on the top. That is so oh, cool. Really yeah. I kept me. reading the interview and I was just like, it's just getting cooler and cooler. Like, Oh my God, this is so fun. Like, yeah. yeah. So that's oh, incredible. You. And yeah, you so- are you're working on a piece right now, or you just finished up a piece right now, and it's on your website. Yes, yes. And I think, um, yeah, if you want to tell you one, but Johnny, I think we're going to link uh, how to get to her website and everything below. So if you guys want to check out Jen's artwork, obviously her Instagram, you can go there as well as her website. And she just finished up a piece. And I really want to talk to you a little bit about your artwork because um, it's definitely Americana like culture you know you do pinups uh and can you talk a little bit about how you got into like loving that specific genre of artwork oh absolutely so um i went to school uh college to become an artist like a a fine artist and i learned all of the different mediums um and we got to all the different mediums except for anything automotive related and so after i graduated i started dabbling in like trying to learn how to paint with automotive enamels and trying to learn that's not an easy task (laughs) yes and um and so once i started to like feel confident if you will on like at least just knowing how the paint works i started to try and apply like my shading techniques and color theory that i had learned through my fine art degree and once I applied the two of them together is kind of how I came up with the style that I call now is pinstripe illustration, um, which is kind of a combination of like the shading from, you know, it's all done in automotive enamels, but it's on canvas. Um, I do things on metal as well, but um, it's all shaded. And then I love to do like take the pinstriping brushes and like outline everything in like a real dark black. And um, so it's just kind of a cool juxtaposition between like really vibrant shaded colors and then like a really harsh outline of black which is crazy if you look at my old work that i was doing in oil i was doing exactly the same thing where i would like shade everything out and then like outline it with like this harsh black line and my teacher my art teachers were like why do you have to have the black line and i'm like that's the that's the cool like that's the contrast it it makes it pop you know like i mean a tattoo is not a tattoo without the black outline around it you know like yeah 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 so so we're showing some tattoos because that like is huge i i get huge inspiration from like tattoo artwork and of course the flash and stuff awesome yeah but um and so, so with that, I like, of course, like a lot of guys started coming to me to like paint pin up on their, on their bikes and things. And so um, I just kind of picked that, the, the idea of like, wow, pin up seems to be like my thing. I love to paint it. Um, I like classy, like 1940s inspired, 1950s inspired pin up. Um, and so I kind of integrated that into my, my artwork that I have in my series now. And, and it seemed to have taken off. So I'm just really thankful for the feedback and it's been really cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, it's great to like do what you love and get to choose what you do. Cause oh, it's, yeah. it's amazing. I started looking at yourself. I'm like, oh my God, I love this. It's, oh, thank so you. again, uh, do you want to kind of talk about the painting that you've just finished up that we can find oh, on yes. your website for sale? Yeah, definitely. So um, the cool thing about what I do outside of commission work is the series that they're showing on the screen right now. And I'm able to work with different hey, photographers. Is. 
um, that I find on Instagram or whichever. And this recent painting that I did, um, it's called Sleeping on the Blacktop. I just finished it like two days ago. It's, it's the, la the, um, the next painting in the series that they're showing on the screen. Um, but I got to work with Lens and Wheels Photography, one of his uh, portraits that he did. Um, it's a beautiful photo. Um, it's done at night. And I think it's like a long exposure type photo. He, of course, oh, awesome. He's a professional at that. So I don't know. Awesome. Instant, yeah. But it was super inspiring. And I have this whole like portfolio on my phone of like images that I've saved of photographers. And so I reached out to him and I said, hey, I would love to um, use your photo as inspiration for this painting. Okay, I'm going to grab it right here. Awesome. And, um, and is this the one that's up right now? Yeah. So this is the painting. Awesome. And then. I don't know. There we go. <laughs> Incredible. Um, so oh, I love done. that. Thank you. It's all done in automotive enamels as well. And, and what's it on? Is it like a metal panel or um, canvas? I know it's, on, it's on canvas. And okay, um, cool. yeah, it's all. My flathead. Cool I get to like use the the same brushes that I would like pinstripe a car with and then like apply them in that in that way. And so, yeah, so I just finished that Incredible. one. Um, it's part of my She's Been Everywhere Man series, which is basically like the machine or the female figure like in different locations all throughout America. So <laughs> totally, totally. That's actually why I kind of set off in, in modeling myself is because to take that digital image that I had in my head of women in cars and kind of try to make art with it. Yes. It's like, it definitely is inspiring to me as well as a That's creative so cool. mind. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, your series. Yes. So she's been everywhere, man. Do you want to kind of tell us a little bit more about that? Because that's something that I don't know very much about and I'm really interested to hear about. For sure. So like um, the images that were just coming across the screen, a lot of those were part of that series. But um, the series itself started as 10 paintings um, that were inspired by a Johnny Cash song. I, I don't, He didn't originally write it, but like that song, I've Been Everywhere. I've Been Everywhere, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that song, like I've heard it a million times and for some reason, just one time, this last time I heard it, it just like hit me. And I'd been looking for like a overarching like theme to start creating my own artwork in because what I do for a living with asphalt canvas is basically take other people's ideas and recreate them in artwork, whether it be like hand painted graphics on a helmet or a canvas piece like this. Sure. And so yeah. for a while I, I hadn't done any artwork from like my own head. And so I don't know if that makes sense, but it uh, does. I It does. Yeah. Okay. And so I started thinking like, I, like I've like i been out of college for almost 10 years. Like I need to come up with like a theme where I can create artwork in, in, in my own style. Cause like I was starting to like see a style coming through with all of my commission pieces. And so this theme came to me, this I've been everywhere, man. But then I thought pin up, I was like, she's been everywhere, man. And I can like give these women, like kind of like put them in the driver's seat of these really cool cars. And a lot of these women are actual women in real life that I was able to work with, like reach out and say like, Hey, I'd, I'd love to like work with you and put you into this painting. I just want to make sure that this, I can use your photograph and make sure it's cool. So I was working with like car owners, pinup models and this one in wow. particular. Um, so it has like a really depth story behind yeah. each one of these images. It's, exactly, it's actually yeah. real life people and real cars. Yes, definitely. That's so yeah. exciting. That's really cool. I actually didn't know any of that. So oh, cool. Thank yeah, you. that's really neat to like yeah, learn about fun. that. It's really so that's your, I that's your series it. of that. And do you have, are you going to keep going with it? Do you have like a projected time to stop and do something else? But no, I think um, so. I just recently, like seven months ago, had a baby. <laughs> and congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. So, my husband and I are both proud parents of a little boy. But um, so at That's first, I was thinking, like, thank you. <laughs> at first, I was like, I'm just going to like just put this off for a few. But then I started thinking, like, what if I, I had all these images of just cars and I thought, what if I, the she in the series just became the car itself um, instead of the, always the pinup model? And so that kind of opened up this theme to like be a lot like broader. And so I was able, it was a lot more broad of a theme for me to be able to like put in a lot more ideas. And so actually I'm going to continue on. I only have 10 paintings or 11 paintings with the one I just showed, um, but I'm going to start making more paintings just within that overarching theme. Like I'm working on one right now that is going to be San Francisco where it's like cool. a picture of my, my family member. Um, it's really cool. I'll show you. Yeah. We'd love to see that. This, this is, really is cool. my, um, this is my family member. Oh um, wow. And so she's going to be featured in my next painting. Um, and there's going to be like the San Francisco bridge behind it. How and cool. 
I always get really inspired by like old vintage travel po posters. And so um, my Pinterest is like full of those. And I and love that's that. Gonna be, that's going to be the next probably She's Been Everywhere man painting outside of this. Massive I love that. Life. That's so cool because I definitely love everything vintage. Like myself, yeah. I'm into, I have a 63 car as well because I love oh, really? that era. Yeah, I have a 63 Wildcat. And oh, so yeah. I just, I really love anything vintage like that. So you're speaking my language right yeah. now. Oh, yes. Like, that's but that's cool. really cool because now you're taking people that you actually know. So yeah. you're able to like recreate that from. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, and that kind of stemmed actually from like waiting to hear back from a bunch of different photographers because <laughs> I, I don't. It happens. Really, yeah. But yeah, I can't really paint. I don't want to paint their their work until like I get their written approval because Absolutely. obviously like copywriting, copyright and stuff. So then I was yeah. like, I have all these really cool pictures. Like, why don't I just use these while I'm waiting? <laughs> That's so cool. That is yeah. so cool. I love that. And then you don't have to ask for permission that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, looking at my notes here because, man, like I said, we have so much to talk about. Um, oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, and we have some events. You have some events coming up in your local area. Maybe we can yes. talk a little bit about those. Oh, yes, I'd love to because Gnarly Magazine is actually sponsoring this upcoming event we have. Um, so uh, when I was first starting, I got invited to this event called um, the Pinstripers Jamboree at the Dallas Autorama. And I was so nervous because I had just started pinstriping and for some yes. reason they saw they saw like they saw some sort of something in me to want to go ahead and do it, uh, invite me there. And so for the first couple of years, I was attending as an artist. And then this year they've invited me as a host. Incredible. And so me and like six other guys and gals are hosting the revamped version of this pinstriping um, panel jam, which is called the Great Texas Pinstripers Panel Jam. And it's going to be taking place at the Dallas Autorama on February 17th through 19th. And we're really excited. We've invited um, up to 20 artists and we're going to be painting live for three days during the Autorama event. And then all of the artwork we create will go up for auction during, during the Autorama and, um, any monies that we make from the auction will go and benefit, um, Scottish right for children. So we've raised a awesome. hundred, like, Awesome. So for these people. I, I, I love that. The number, I love artwork with heart behind it. And especially yeah. when it's going to something good like that. So is yes. there anywhere are you guys going to be broadcasting this like going live and Yes. Well, um, well, I'm, I'm doing all the social media for it. So if I can like Thanks, muster Amelia. up like the ability to do some live feed, like definitely like if y'all want to get it, it gets around. busy. <laughs> yes. One man show. I'll be, yeah. painting, I'll be painting as well. So oh, um, wow. Yeah, it's going to be crazy yeah. and fun. But um, but yeah, if you want to follow us, we're the Great Texas Panel Jam on Instagram. And, and we just started up there. So, you know, spread the word and hopefully each year it'll get better and better. Um, Absolutely. But it's super cool, like just to get with all these like like minded artists, like totally man, talk about like just creativity, like overload. It's so totally. Fun. Yeah, uh, I, I can kind of relate. I went yeah. to SEMA last year and that's what it was. It was just like so many creative people just yes. doing what they love and doing what you love. And it like, it creates this energy. It's like this yes. magic and it's so exciting. And mm -hmm. like, just to know that that magic's going to be like transferred over to like saving kids. I don't think it gets much better than that. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> like so well, cool. I'll come home and just sit in my studio, just like beaming. Like I'm just so I love like, I love like overloaded with inspiration. So absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. And that's really cool too. Cause again, gnarly mag, magazine is going to be sponsoring that yes. so yes, we're excellent so grateful for them. and so um and they can get all of this information on your personal instagram as well yes i have and, a couple posts about it um if anyone okay, that cool. wants to attend the art, art, art auction or the live painting events you will need a ticket into the autorama which i think it's like 23 dollars, and you can buy those tickets at your local o'reilly's but it, the the auction will be in the autorama so you need a ticket awesome to to is there parking and all that so stuff there. I think yeah, parking's pretty. I don't think you you may not have to pay for it. I'm not sure on that. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, the, all the information is on the Dallas Autorama website as far as the Autorama is concerned. So okay, and let's talk about your personal Instagram and where everyone can find you, follow you, see your artwork. Yeah. So um, Asphalt Canvas Art is my Instagram, um, and then. Mm -hmm. Asphalt Canvas Custom Art on Facebook, and I have everything on my website as well, which is asphaltcanvascustomart.com. Um, yeah, my it's been a slow process. I, my Instagram got deleted last year, and so it's been like a real slow process, like building back my that, portfolio on there. <laughs> that's that's really but, really rough. Um, yeah, yeah, I've had that happen. <laughs> I've had that happen to my personal, and losing some of the photos that I didn't 
wasn't smart enough to save and I can't get back. It's kind of, yeah. kind of stinks, but uh, did that affect business at all for you? Um, yes, it did. Cause it was right before Christmas and I do a lot oh. of sales through Instagram. And so, um, it did a little bit, but, um, it, t it taught me like a lot as well. Like just to make sure you have a space offline that's Becca. got, you know, that's yours and <laughs> nobody else's and make sure you have an email list and all of those, those amazing business things, which I've started to learn. Like I've started to understand like the, I have a lot of different like t tidbits of knowledge on the back end of like owning an art business that I, that I want to share with people. And so, um, one of the things I did want to say on here is that I will be, um, host, I'm not, I'm creating a membership through Patreon that I'm going to be releasing in the summer. Um, that's kind of got like art tips. Um, you'll be live awesome. in the studio with me and then like business tips because I, I've, I have a lot of people on my Instagram that are just starting up and they have a bunch of questions and I'm happy to help them with like totally for free and everything. But man, it's been so fun to like help those people. And I want to be able to build a membership where like all of those people can be in one place and I can teach them what I, what I've learned. Like so you know, great because it is, it's very um, multidimensional once you get to a certain level and yeah. being a business owner, it's not just about being an artist anymore, but it's really mm -hmm. about the components that go into that. So that's really cool that Thank you've you. thought about sharing that. That's definitely something that could be helpful as well as keep you driven and like yeah definitely and I think like um it will give me a, an outlet to like not only have like a little bit more of like a, a an income stream like like we were just saying earlier before we were recording you have like 10 income streams as a as a business owner to try and make ends meet you know <laughs> yeah um, I think mean, yeah. that's like one of the I mean it's it, there's no shame in saying that like it's gonna be oh a, I'm proud of it I'm yeah, proud of like, it. I just hope I can keep up energy wise. <laughs> oh, girl. Yeah. You and me both. Yeah. Um, Especially I, being a new mom. I can only imagine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's a dance for sure. I mean, it, it, it's not a balance, but definitely a dance. <laughs> uh, there you go. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, and that just shows like, you know, who you are as a person. I think that does fall back in line with passion because without yeah. that, you can't stay driven. It's just oh, it's yeah. a lot all the time. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Like, yeah, passion. And then like having yeah, that support system, like my husband picks up the slack when I can't and I fit my yes. parents are there when we can't. And I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy. So um, I, I saw somebody said like, what are my tools of the trade brands? Yes. Of brushes? Yeah. Um, so I primarily use um, Mac brushes, the uh, Gerald Tidwell sets, um, Broken Pinky. They're the pink brushes. I don't have any out right now, but they're and are the you pink. fond of a certain size? Is there like uh, a one go to? Um, no, it's actually, it, it's a whole set of different size brushes, which helps with the illustration aspect of what I do. Um, okay. because you, if you're like shading colors, like those Tidwell brushes they're they come in like a wide a range. There's like six brushes per set. And I use the green handled and the pink handled ones. And that gives me the ability to like switch in between, um, like if I'm shading one big shape or a bunch of small ones, like those brushes are the best for that. And then the Mac virus brushes are what I do all my outlining with. And a lot of my pinstriping actually um, are the virus set. So I go through so many of those sets of brushes because I'm terrible at cleaning them out. I'm, I'm try I try to. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the guy that actually taught me, he was so... I mean, he's like saved the last square of paper towel kind of yeah. awesome guy. Like he's very frugal and thrifty. He's always like, Stop, don't make fun of me. But this is, <laughs> but it is, it's like important to clean your brushes. But yeah. It's, I met, yeah, it's they important. get, I mean, they're super pricey after a while. I mean, I'm super yeah. blessed to have a friendship with Gerald. And so him and his wife supply me with brushes every now and then, but still awesome. like, um, like those, the Mac brushes, those are my, those are my go-to. Um, I don't normally use the sword brushes too much, but if I do, I'll use the Todd Hansen King 13, uh, brushes. Cause they're just the easiest for me to, to figure out. It's, <laughs> those yeah, are my it's brushes. Of, from talking to pinstripers, it really comes down to preference is what I'm learning. And, and oh, to yeah. your artwork that you're doing, cause you kind of yeah. have a different, uh, take of most just random, Sorry. Like straight <laughs> stripes, really crazy. Yeah, yeah, like straight stripes. Um, and yeah, then, exactly. And then as far as the enamels that I use, um, I do use one shot, but I, for the last like three years, I've almost exclusively used Alpha Enamel, um, which is the Alpha 6 Corporation enamel paints they offer. And they also have acrylic paints, which is what I do like a lot of my underpainting with. I don't know if you okay. like there's a, a huge painting back here and the whole thing the light is, is super bright on it so it's yeah like, you can't see what <laughs> um, it is but me it's a good thing it's, it's, like a a, it's gonna be a lead slide like a big gold lead slide oh you can't see it very well but that's okay 
Awesome. Um, awesome. I'm excited Alpha to see it when you're finished. I use Alpha Enamel um, or Alpha 6 acrylic paints. And then um, and then for the like automotive enamel on top of it, I'll also use um, Alpha 6 enamels. So they've been okay. so good to me and they've sent me so much paint. And, and when I have different projects, like I was working with um, a couple guys out out west and like they caught on to the project and they're like oh we'd love to send you some paint and they've just been wonderful to work with and they cool. I, it's a cool to have like a brand that's u.s made like i i'm really proud absolutely. of that um, absolutely absolutely so it like, really I'm, is I'm, everything's I'm, outsourced and yeah so. yeah yeah so um but yeah those are my brushes and, and my brands that i go to if you want any of that paint i do have a link on my website it's called art tools you can just click through there and it'll take you to their website awesome. and, so that's awesome. awesome. Do you yeah. have uh, maybe any, uh, like, I always like to ask people this, but do you have any recommendations other than that of like, if somebody really wants to learn this artwork, uh, what would you tell them to do? Oh, okay. Well, I would definitely, I would, I would, this might sound cliche, but I would just say like, learn the rules, like in any medium first. <laughs> Um, I know it sounds so boring and it was boring for me too when I was first learning pinstriping because I had already been through like all of these boring like beginning art classes in college and then once I got out I was like I better start learning the basics of pinstriping and the basics of pinstriping is literally just painting lines on glass like over and over and over Absolutely. and over again and um, it was yeah. so boring and I was always tempted to like go over to start building designs and and um, like mixing the colors and and doing all that all the fancy stuff the the like kitschy like, the real cool stuff but i would just say like learn the rules first and then once you feel adequate like just adequate enough with that then you can really start um like learning how to break them and that's when it becomes fun and honestly like just in the last two years i would say have i started to quote like break the rules when it comes to pinstriping because there's so many people in this industry that have like set the bar so high that i didn't want to disrespect them and like where they've come from and so it took me a long time to even like consider like doing what i call pinstripe illustration and i announcing totally it. i totally agree with that yeah. yeah everyone's like oh tara's a pinstriper and i'm like no 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 i'm an auto painter i know i can do that and very yeah. well then striping, I'm still an apprentice and it's yeah, like, yeah, I would it say, is. I would say I am as well. Like I definitely, um, you know, it, I think there's a couple levels of like, you know, when you, you're like a seasoned professional or apprentice, like there's a couple levels in between there and I'm somewhere in between there, you know, um, I think like if you're getting paid for it and you're like able to make a living at it, of course, you're not like a, a beginner, but I definitely have so much to learn when it comes to just laying out straight stripes and different design builds. And honestly, Hot Rod Gin has been like a huge um, inspiration same. to me on my building and my colors. Um, but even just knowing like the basic, and I'm sure you felt this way too, but even like knowing just like the basics of like what colors you can mix to make a darker red instead of adding black, like you can add green to red. Totally. It, that it comes like down to color feature. theory a lot too, but yeah. yeah. It yeah, becomes that's... so much more richer than just like, oh, I can just add black to, to this and it, it'll darken it. Well, if you add green to red and then add a black outline around it, like those colors just pop that much more. And so knowing all those like basic core rules of like how to draw and how to do color theory, those things will build over time. And I think in turn create like a really like um, gritty, like, like, there's grit behind your craft when you have all that knowledge behind you, you know, in your, in I your totally tool belt. Agree. You know? <laughs> yeah. When I, uh, I jumped into it, just trying to get, like you were saying, start with cr fun, crazy colors and all these designs. And my teacher yeah. was like, Nope, here's a mirror. And you're yeah. going to just practice pulling lines. And I was like, Oh, this is so boring. He's like, no, this is, there's so many techniques on just pulling a straight line and like oh, it builds yeah. from there. And if you don't start with the basis, you don't get better. I keep trying to remind myself that. <laughs> oh, it's so true. It's so true. Like I, one of the best things I did was I took a pinstriping class cause I had already, I'd just been self-taught up until this point. And I took okay, a pinstriping awesome. class um, with, uh, Ryan, the Ryan at counts and Darren Winslow through um, amazing painter. Yes, Ryan, both of yeah, both of them are amazing both guys. Yeah. Great, talented guys, but they both taught like they they taught me so much. But something that I picked up so much was something that Ryan said was like if you put your paintbrush in, like if you put a long heavy chain in the sand and you stood far away from where the chain was touching in the dirt, 
that chain would stay completely straight, even if you were like over here moving around because the chain in is in the sand. And it's he anchored, said that's yeah. how you apply your paintbrush to the canvas. Huh. Like the, the end of your brush with the paint on it is that heavy end of the chain in the sand. And no, it doesn't really matter how much you're shaking or moving. As long as you have that confident like place placement and then pull back, like that like blew my mind. That, that like, did just me too right now. I was like, whoa, that is so true. Like feeling yeah. that is, that's a definite verbal description of what it yeah. feels like to pull that line. Wow. Yeah. And so like, just yeah. little it's like that I've been able to pick up through, and that's the blessing of social media too. Like I've been able to pick up these little tidbits from just like these amazing artists that in other life I would never have any access to. So as long as I was like respectful and asking totally. you know, opinion on something, like they've all been so wonderful and giving me feedback and, and Was, being is there a certain them. person in particular that you can definitely say that you reached out to or inspired you the most and oh, and helped oh, you? Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's probably a list, but like I said, Hot Rod Jen is definitely one of them. And now we're now we've kind of built like a friendship off of that. Cool. Um but in in the automotive industry, like Gooch Customs, um, he's really helped me, um, especially in the beginning of my career. Um, oh gosh, there's so many. Like I can't yeah. even. I can't. You know, the Brush and Pen Studio, Leanne, um, out of Australia. She, um, I took an online sign painting class with her, and to this day, like I'll do some lettering and I'll send it to her and I'll ask her honest opinion, and she'll be on it like brutally honest. I love that. Yeah, yeah I, I love when love people. I don't like people are like, oh yeah, you look great. They're like, no, you've got some in your toothpaste. They're like, you know, like yeah, yeah. be honest and real, because then you can only grow and get better. Yeah. And, and I think like, it's special to know the difference between, um, once you get into that realm of like being a professional that other people are seeking advice from, it's so special to know the difference between constructive criticism and just criticism. Absolutely. I'm sure like as a dancer, you knew this too. Like there's a difference between just saying like that shit or that this is shit. And this is why, (laughs) like you got to have the why behind it. Yeah. Those people have breaks down. Yeah. With that absolutely really yeah that's yeah so um in it's kind of cool too knowing pinstriping and how complex that it could be that you kind of never gave up and like with dancing too it's like mm-hmm. you have days you have good days sometimes and you just absolutely flawlessly kill it and like you keep working up to that moment it's such a victory and then sometimes you're like i've been working so hard for this like why is it not flowing mm-hmm. and it's like i think it's really yes. com- important to like get back up and still try again. And like, maybe don't let those down days, you know, get to you. So yeah, yeah, people who are still trying. I can't remember what artist it was, but I know, I know Gerald Tidwell has said this, that like inspiration is for pansies because as a working artist, like you cannot just wait until like this like wave of inspiration just comes over you and you're just in your studio with a glass of wine. And you know, like, it's not like that. It's like, I gotta like, pay the rent I got to pay the more you know baby's crying you still got to get this done the real the realness of it the yeah like there's been many times where I've been in the studio this is my studio that I'm in and it's like you're just kind of like (laughs) I've just been like I mean real real talk like sitting in here crying and like trying to paint you know because it's like "Ah, I'm so stressed out yeah (laughs) no and you know what that's that's uh, thank you for being so transparent and and raw and like that's so that's things that I love personally to touch on because it's not just always that one image where you see something you're like, Oh my gosh, she's so good. I'll never be that good. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's like, you've sat, like you said, in your studio and you've cried and you've persevered through it and you've continued to do it. And that's ultimately how you got to where you are. And like, it's not something that you could just snap your fingers or wait for that wave of inspiration. So that's truly incredible. Yes. And I know one of the things that you uh, messaged me before we got talking was like advice, like for somebody starting in this. And I I was really thinking about that all today because I I normally say the same thing and it's kind of cliche, but I have a new one that I was like, I need to like tell people. Hey, Dino. Hey. (laughs) That's the Um, homie right there. You guys check him out too. He's awesome. Fence driver. Oh, awesome. We'll do for sure. Um, But like I started to realize in the last couple of years that like opportunity does you don't have to wait for it to come to you. I don't know if that makes sense, but like everything that's worth talking about in my career in the last five years has been something that obviously like I I believe in God and he's provided that to me, but I wasn't just like sitting in my studio, like hoping and waiting for that opportunity to like come and like fall in my lap. I was actually like actively reaching out to companies I wanted to work with and like reaching out to, you know, competitions I wanted to enter and like 
there was always that chance of failure and like embarrassment, especially when I first started Pinterest. You know, you know how that is. Like when you first putting start fear, putting fear aside. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I normally say. But like, yeah. what I want to say is like, if you have an idea or like, if you have something that you're wanting to do or like a company you want to work with that just seems completely audacious, like it doesn't matter. Like just go and ask, like ask the people that need to be asked and all they can tell you is no, or they can tell you like, Oh, I'm not in charge of that, but here's the person that you can get to. And it's just like, that just like changed when I look back, like that's one of the things that I realized I was doing without realizing it. And I think that's the biggest like advice I would give to somebody in the business is like, having the grit to like have those shitty days. Cause you're going to have more of those probably than you have good ones. And then waiting for totally. that opportunity. You will always have more shitty days than wins, yeah. man. Wins yeah. are very few, but they make them more sweeter that way. Oh yeah. Like my dad yeah. always says like the struggle is the blessing. And that's so absolutely, true, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. That's actually how I found myself at SEMA this last year is full send. <laughs> I just was like, worst thing you could say is no, you know, I'm yeah. just going to put it out there. And if you don't ask, mm -hmm. you'll never gain because no, you're won't. not asking, you know, yeah. like you, you, the only way to receive something is to ask for it. And yeah. Yeah. you might fail, yeah. you know, you might get told, no, keep continuing to ask. That's such great advice. Yeah. And I think like, I, that's so true because even if you get told no, like, don't get me wrong. There has definitely been some moments in my career where somebody's like invited me, for instance, this interview, like y'all invited me, but like, it was a long, a long runway of like getting to know Johnny and getting to know Chuck and getting to know all these different people. And there have been different, like those no's may have been no's at the time, but like it opened up doors for me to be invited, uh, you know, in other places. So like, it's just crazy. It's not like you have control of your destiny, but you do have control of like your career and like, what you want to do like you have control over that to an extent <laughs> you totally do no it's amazing yeah. advice because some and sometimes people forget that little detail because it seems to be so simple like once you've gotten started you're like why didn't i ever start or i should have done but it's like sometimes like you need that little reminder that it is in your capability mm -hmm. it is within your grasp you just got to do it like yes. you just have to do it and like yes. I mean, look where you can go with it, with your career, you know, like yeah. that's so oh, incredible. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Cause oh, I love asking <laughs> people like, you know, who other people might see as these big success, which is amazing, but mm -hmm. you know, like there's, there's always advice that could be given along the way. And it seems to be yeah. a pretty common theme is don't let fear be your ruler essentially. So oh, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. That's so incredible. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I have so much. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to check my notes really quickly. Like no we've problem. kind of gone over uh, everything I do. We did talk about uh, the pinstripers panel that you guys are doing in Texas. And that's yes. February, you said 17th through 19th? 17th through 19th. Okay. Wow. Well, I yes. can't believe I remember that. Okay. And then you guys have, you have something, an event coming up in March. Yes. Okay. So okay. I guess it's like a perfect lead in because, um, I had been doing like a lot of different networking things and like interviews and podcasts and like reaching out to different people. And I finally, I haven't told anybody this, but I finally got the um, invitation to the Amelia Island concourse as one of the um, wow. vendors there. So wow. I'll be a vendor, an, an art vendor there at, at the Amelia Island concourse. How in, uh, exciting. Florida. So congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's incredible. That's so incredible. Thank you. So really... we have a question here. I'm going to read, uh, yes, ask okay. you about the non-art business and non what you would, uh, advice Ooh. you would give on that front. The non-art business. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. Well, everything I know about the art business is like by the seat of my pants. Like I've learned like through the school of hard knocks, like to the point where I've had to like pay the tax man, like an additional fee or like the tax man has refunded me because I paid too much. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, I don't know how, I don't know if I have any advice just because I'm still, um, in the learning stages, if you will. Um, which it sounds crazy cause I'm five years in, but no, uh, no, that's not. There's, yeah. There's just, there's, There's always like a schedule, learn. I think, that is really important for working artists that I would say, like, has attributed to, like, my product, like, my productivity and, quote, my success. And that's, like, making sure that you have, like, days for certain things. Um, like, I do, like, a day for my social media and, like, plan everything out. Um, and then, like, a day for my emails. Like, two days, I, only two days, I try and check my email and respond. And, um, Otherwise, it's otherwise you're just like going crazy because you are literally doing the emailing, the tax, the business, the cleaning, the painting. Like it's too much. So like 
you are in those days. Um, take it down. Yeah. Yeah. Like I heard it called a CEO schedule. So like, if I love somebody, it. Like, if somebody hey, David wants Martinez. That, yeah. Hey, David. Oh, I, I pinched up his truck a while back. At, and awesome. He's a great customer. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for popping yeah. in today, David. For sure. Thanks so for yeah, it, that's so important. Um, yeah. That helps with not being overwhelmed. I know yes. when I started my business, um, I felt like I had to do everything at once and nothing oh, gets yes. done that way. And so exactly what you said, Wednesdays are Gnarly Magazine's interview days mm -hmm. for me personally. And it is, it's about being scheduled. I kind of write it out and sometimes, you know, life happens. You've got to change things around a little bit, but like, yeah. like you said, don't get overwhelmed with social media, maybe make a certain time for that, your emails. So that's amazing, amazing advice. That's yeah. Great yeah. Advice. And I would say, I don't know if you could feel this way, but like I, on the, on the money side of it, um, like to actually like have some actionable tips is like, just, I, I got to start my business without taking out like a massive business loan because I work from home. And so that's a huge blessing. Um, but like know your artwork's worth, not your worth, but your artwork's worth. <laughs> that, um, I totally, like I, when I first struggle. started, I was like, I don't know, you won't even give me money for this. Like I, yeah. you, but you're totally right. And yeah, I actually kept not, hearing over and over, oh, I would pay more for this. And I was like, well, maybe I should start asking. Because <laughs> if go. you don't I've ask, that, you don't receive, right? Absolutely. And I've heard that too. And like, once you hear that one time, you will never forget that feeling of like, oh crap. <laughs> yeah. So, it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. And, so and it's a really like, hard thing to do. It is. So how did is. you base your, because I have like a little rule of thumb, how I do it, but how, how did you kind of figure out like a, a value for yours? Yeah. So I think everybody does it differently. And honestly, like mine um, fluctuates a lot because I have a hard time doing this still even five years in. Um, but for my flat work, I go um, basically by the square inch um, per square inch. And then I also add on like a custom frame and my material costs. And so I average everything out and that's what you'll see on my website is those types of prices. Awesome. Um, yeah. for my pinstriping work, I kind of learned from a guy who I used to work with at caliber collision that was doing like just coach lines and he priced a lot of his work by the panel. And so I kind of took that and put it on, you know, into my own business totally. in my way. And so that's yeah. how I, you know, do pen striping. And then of course you have to account for like your, tr like travel and your and uh, processing that, yeah. fees. Like if somebody's paying on shipping you know, and online, like those are all small things when I first started that I was just like, man, I'll just eat the cost. And then at the end of the year, you're like, <laughs> you're oh, like, wow, well, that adds up. Yeah. <laughs> totally so, been there myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and you know what, nobody's really transparent with how they do those things. And it kind of, like I get why, but like at the same time, when I was first learning, I had no idea what the hell I was supposed to price anything at. Like, um, okay. and yeah. in addition to that, like now that I am more of a, an established artist with my own style and like, well, I've been doing this for a while. I do account for the fact that like my work has been featured like many, many as times. It should. Like, as it absolutely published. should. Yeah. And so I think as, as a fine artist, especially, I'm not sure as, I, I, yeah, I would say for pinstriping as well. Um, if you've been like published or featured, like those things have to go into account on how you price your work because that's how art works. Like it, it, you be like, it sucks because it's like you're, you're more sought after, therefore you should be charging more. That's how I see it. I know a lot of people may disagree with me or have a different opinion and that's totally okay, but that's just how I see it. <laughs> and I think that's the great part about being an artist is because you do kind of get to set your own caliber at yeah. first, it's really hard to it's even hard, find yeah. your, your feeding. Like, you're, you know, you're stumbling around. You're like, I don't even know. Like, I, I was just making stuff for friends and giving it away. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing, I was doing like these little markets, you know, and kept hearing yeah, people yeah. going, no, you should charge more for this. This is amazing. Or, and then it's like the time that's involved and like, you're going to find different ways. I think mm -hmm. maybe that's why not everyone yeah. shares that because it's a little bit different of the things that you might do, that's but like, like that is great. To to totally. B. Yeah, so. totally. So there's different, um, supplies involved. You always take supply costs, double it, triple it for your time. That was like right. the one rule. That was the number one rule I learned Smart. and kind of, you know, just go from there. But, um, yes. but yeah, that's great advice for anyone starting out, trying for to sure. ultimately go into art as uh, like a full time. And, and also business. don't be scared of having a secondary job or having a spouse or some, a significant other that's like supporting you every now and then because like there are definitely times in my business when I was first starting especially where like 
the commissions had been booked, but nobody was paying for a set amount of a month. And so it was my husband that was carrying the load. And so like we shared that and we, and sometimes we still do share. You know, we always share the load oh, as far as financial. That's great that you have that. Yeah, yeah. I'm so blessed to have that. But I'm I was absolutely ashamed. blessed to have that. Yes. But I was ashamed of it at first. Like I felt like. I, because, I see that. Yeah, because I can, like I, I wasn't like paying all the bills with my with my studio like I was a failure at my business and I still wrestle with that but, because I'm just but super that's ambitious. a partnership you know and that's, yeah, what, it's that's about. what it's all about and so don't be ashamed to like have a second like I did this for almost 10 years where I was working a full-time day job and then doing wow. work at night so like wow. don't be ashamed of that to have a secondary job I know a lot of people disagree like I heard Gerald Ted will say like if if you have no other option then you for that sure will make money and I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I actually live with a performer who's been a performer like freelance since I think 2006. So I mean, yeah. that's pretty incredible long run. And yeah. that's what he always tells me. He's like, if you are going to set up on this art business, don't ever take a day job, like only focus. And it's like, that's, that's really great if you fall into that or like yeah. you have that, you know, liberty, but not everyone does. And don't be ashamed of it. That's a really great. Yeah, don't be ashamed of it. And like, if that provides you the ability to paint, then that's freaking awesome. Like, especially if it's your God-given talent, like you have to figure out how to do it. And for a while, that was how I did it. And when I was single, awesome. man, that was how it was done. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that no, that's incredible. Like, yeah. I really appreciate your time and for sharing that and being so transparent because there's so many people that I think are like afraid no. of sharing personal stuff like that. You know, yeah, maybe no, they'll be I like can't. gatekeepers or something or but yeah. like, it's so great that you are being so transparent and so real. And like, I think that shines as you as a person and it definitely reflects on how beautiful your artwork is. I think it's, Thank I'm you. just really glad I got to kind of meet you in person. Hopefully oh, I get to sure. run into you out on the road. Maybe it'd be really oh, I cool. So. To I mean, some lines next yes, to you I one day. So I'm so grateful, like, you know, to have this experience with you and like have this opportunity to like talk to a bunch of people about my artwork because now I am blessed to be able to do this full time and make a living, like a good living at it. I'm, I'm so blessed at that. And it, I couldn't do it without like my clients that pay for my artwork. And then like the, the publicity that gnarly magazine has given me and like what you're, you're taking your time to interview me about my career, my life. And I'm, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity. I love that. <laughs> Gratitude is the attitude, right? Like as long as oh, you I stay grateful true. and grout and you know, it's like, it can't go wrong when you find yeah. a little small thing. So that's really yeah. great. Like I'm just honored, you know, gnarly magazine picked me up to do this. Cause I just get to meet great people. Like oh, how, yeah. how awesome is that? So it is, it's just putting yourself out there, but um, I think we're going to start wrapping up a little bit okay. and we talked about everything. I'm like kind of looking through my notes. We yeah. hit your artwork again. Um, if you guys want to check out um, your amazing artwork, Kate Cook's okay. artwork, uh, you can find the link. I think we're going to link it down below. So in case okay. you're, you want to link, link it, find it. You can also go to her Instagram account. You want to say that one more time so they can find you. Yes, um, Asphalt Canvas Art on Instagram. Facebook is uh, facebook.com forward slash B8Kate. And then www.asphaltcanvascustomart.com is my website. Awesome. And uh, do you want to give it out any shout outs today? I've got Johnny from Gnarly Magazine asking me. Oh, man. I don't. Well, obviously, Johnny, thanks for um, always supporting my artwork and letting me be on the show. Um, I, it sounds so corny when I say shout outs, but obviously, like I already said, my. Um, James and Gail at Alpha Enamel. I'm super thankful for them. Gerald Tidwell and his wife for supporting me with the brushes. Um, and then obviously my family and my husband. I'm so grateful because I couldn't do this without them. I really couldn't. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's it's always great to have people supporting you and what you do. So Absolutely. yeah, so we, we are still announcing uh, next week's guest. So stay okay. tuned for that. Yes. But I do know Hot Rod Jen, the 15th, which is my birthday. Johnny was like, yeah, we're doing it for your birthday, Tari. I was like, Thanks guys. And he's like, I didn't know it was your birthday, <laughs> but That's like, awesome. it's yeah. So check out if you guys want to talk to me and hot rod Jen, that'll be on the 15th again, yeah. Kate, I want to welcome, thank you so much for hanging out with me today for an hour and giving us your time. Cause it sounds like you are an extremely busy lady. So <laughs> as one from one to another, thank you so much. Flathead. Thanks for popping in. Awesome. He's going to go you. check out your amazing work. Thank you. So thank you so much for talking to you today. You guys, thanks for checking in. Don't like to hit that like button. Subscribe. Yes. Gnarlymagazine.com is where you can find that issue that Kate is in, the sixth 
issue uh, 16? 17. 17. <laughs> 17. Issue 17. It's an amazing magazine. I have it here. Flip through it. You can actually find out a little bit more about her story um, in that mag that we didn't touch on today. So I highly suggest getting that, picking it up uh, and support her art. Go. It's it's awesome. It's incredible. So Thanks, keep girl. on painting, lady. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too.